Well, hello again, everyone. This episode of the podcast is sponsored by 101 Hemp, the makers of premium full spectrum raw CBD oil products. Now me, I take about 30 milligrams of CBD of raw CBD every day. And I start my day with the uh, I start my day with the Boost X blend. This is they're all the ones I have a tropical bliss flavor. That's my favorite flavor. They've got a bunch of flavors over there, though. They got a blueberry butterscotch, uh, citrus, just to name a few. I don't know them all. But anyways, getting back to it, I take about 10 milligrams in the morning of the Boost X, which is about half a dropper full. And then at about middle of my day, about three, four o'clock in the afternoon, I take the Alleviate X. Again, take about half a dropper, about, you know, 10 milligrams of this as well. And then at bedtime, about an hour before bedtime, actually, just, you know, to quiet my mind, just to help me sleep, I take another 10 milligrams of the Chill X. And again, that's just going to help me get a, a more restful night's sleep for me. You know, so go over to 101hemp.org, check out all of their tinctures and all of their topicals as well. And don't forget that you can get 25% off of your order when you use coupon code IMGS25. Okay, now let's start the show. Brothers and sisters, welcome back. This is the In My Grow Show. I'm your host, Alex, and I want to thank you once again for taking the time to listen and to watch. I truly do appreciate it. Now, later on today's show, I am going to finally put up that um, conversation, that interview I had with Canna Queen. Remember how I told you a couple of weeks ago that we had uh, recorded this conversation, but for whatever reason, we couldn't like really find a really good date to put it out until this weekend, until today. So yeah, I'm gonna have that. Um, I'm gonna have that interview or that conversation with her here in a little bit, which is really cool. I love talking to Canna Queen, man. She's a really good friend, and she, she's just really fun, man. Um, but before that, I hope everyone's gardens, I hope everyone's cannabis gardens are looking good. Mine's looking okay. It's looking pretty good. You know, trichomes are stacking. It is starting to turn into, or it is starting to uh, wind down the, the end of the outside growing season. In October, that's pretty much harvest season for most people outdoors. Here in California, you know what? I really have some mild winters, so I'm actually able to get a couple, two or three crops in, or two or three grows in, in one season. Like I said, because I do have mild winters. And I think this year I'm going to actually try, or this winter I'm going to try, um, I'm going to grow some autos, or at least one or two, just to see how that goes. It's been a long time since I've grown autos. So that's going to be fun. I'll let you know how that goes. But um, at any rate, yeah, I hope everyone's gardens are looking great. I hope you guys are doing fine out there. Let me pull up my notes again. My notes went blank. All right, so, all right, so now let's get into the uh, strain of the week. Today, I'm going to talk about the Mendo Breath. And the Mendo Breath is a cross between the OG Kush Breath which, once again, depending on who you read on the internet, um, is either a pheno of the cookies or is like the, the patriarch, the, the, the male to the cookies family. I don't know. All I know is that this Mendo breath is really good. And the other half of the Mendo breath is the, um, let me see here, uh, is the Mendo montage. And this flower had a really like a sugary, sweet, floral taste and smell to it. And a little bit of like um, overripe citrus also. Just a little bit. Just a bit. And and some real like peppery notes. Like um, spicy, not so much, more like cayenne pepper. That kind of weird spicy like smell to it and flavor. It was a trip, man. I liked it. I really did like it. Now the nugs themselves or the buds had this um, like army green kind of color to them. With these really bright orange like streaks through them, man. It was a really nice looking bud. Nice and dense too. Really enjoyed it. Great taste. And I got to tell you, this was a really powerful indica flower, man. This um, fucking knocked me on my ass. It was so strong. It basically overpowered everything. That There was no getting any kind of work done on this bud. Um, yeah, this was basically a nighttime bud. It, it robbed me of all kind of ambition to do any work. This is not a daytime flower. It came in at a 21% THC, which was really heavy. So 
I liked it. Not so much a partying weed either, you know. It's not so much something I would take to to be social with because this just made me want to, you know, crawl to the couch, put on a movie, didn't matter what movie either, and just sit there and veg out. So if you need like an end of the day weed, something to just knock you out and just, you know, put you down, that's it. This is the one, the Mendo Breath. Pick it up for sure. And that, brothers and sisters, is the strain of the week. All right, now let's get to the report from the Cannabis Frontline, and uh, let's see, the first story comes out of the Phoenix Times, and it's titled, Patient Charged with Marijuana Possession After Hike on Federal Land, and it was put together by Ramses Baxter. Huh? Wow, that's a handle. That's a good name. I think it's Erasmus? Erasmus Baxter. Erasmus, I'm sorry if I messed up your name, man. That's quite the handle. And basically what this article is about is um, this young guy, Nathan Freddy, who is a cannabis patient. And I, you know what? I really didn't know how, um, how much Arizona had a medical industry as far as cannabis goes. But this dude, Nathan Freddy, was like taking a hike back in, in Arizona at the Aravapia Canyon. So him and his girlfriend and his dog are hanging out. They're having a great time. And then as they're heading back to their vehicle... Uh, they passed like a park ranger who was giving some kind of guided tour. And the park ranger, when he first got there, had noticed that a vehicle didn't have the the proper like adventure pass or, or, you know, pass to be out on federal land. So when this guy, Nathan, came back and, you know, the the ranger noticed that he, um, that his vehicle didn't have the right tags, he, he asked him about it. And as Nathan was looking for the paperwork... In his backpack, the ranger noticed that he had Bud with him. He had a jar of cannabis and, you know, a pipe as well. And it turned out that they wound up, um, yeah, jamming this dude up. They wound up charging this guy with um, possession of marijuana on federal land. Which, yeah, man, I just want to remind you guys, you know, when when you go into wherever you're going to go camping, it says national forest. That is national. That is federal land. And a park ranger, if they want to be really jerks about it, they can jam you up for cannabis. You know, I've I've met both types of park rangers. I've met park rangers who really don't care. You know, they just tell you basically, you know, just don't be flaunting it with people. Don't be out there, you know, taking bong rips in front of families. And I've met park rangers who have no patience for it, man. They will jam you up for the smallest amount of cannabis. They take that shit seriously. So just be aware, man. Just be aware. Even if you're wherever you're at, even if in the state that you're in has legal weed, California, you know, Washington, you know, Oregon, Arizona, even if where you're at, just realize it's state, you know, it's federal land, not state land. You know, if it's a if it's a state park or state land, then, yeah, you got nothing to worry about. But federal national parks. uh, Yeah, man, the um, the rangers can jam you up for it. So just be aware. Now, the next story comes out of normal. That is normal.org. Go over there, um, get educated, get involved, and become a member. But okay, it starts off. South Dakota opposition group polling shows voter support for marijuana legalization initiative. So in South Dakota, they, they had done a poll, this um, anti-cannabis um, movement called the No Way on A, which is No Way, I guess, on Proposition A, which is the constitutional amendment for South Dakota. So they hired some company to do a poll about see how people feel about cannabis. <laughs> and then when they came back, it turns out everybody, or at least the majority of people in South Dakota, support both measures overwhelmingly. And my question is this, though. When you realize that as an opposition group, do you just, wouldn't you just give up? Wouldn't you just, I mean, stop campaigning for it? You're wasting money. You're, I mean, unless you want to fight the good fight. I don't know. I mean... With those kind of numbers, what do you, what do you, exp- I don't know, what, what do you, why don't you just join us? Why don't you just see how you can be part of cannabis instead of trying to be against cannabis? Come on, guys, let's see, what was your name? No way on A. Come on, no way on A. Just, uh, just join us. It'll be fine. We're, we're lovely people. But it sounds like South Dakota is going to get both uh, medical and recreational weed at the same time. Which is bitching. That's a great way to do it. I love what South Dakota is doing, man. They, um, they, it looks like they're taking some notes from states that, you know, made missteps. 
one of them being California. I've always said this, but we're not talking about California. Anyways, um, good on you, South Dakota. No way on A. Come on, man. Just give it up or just come join us. Don't give it up. Just, you know, just join us, man. Come on. We're not that bad. Okay. Let's see what is next. All right. Now, the last story comes out of the Cannabis Business Times, and it's entitled Nine Amicus Briefs Filed with Supreme Court in Support of Removing Cannabis from Controlled Substance Act. My first question is, what is amicus? If there's a lawyer out there, hey, let us know. I know there's lawyers out there. Come on, what is an amicus? All right, and this was put together by Brian McCleaver. Starts off, plaintiffs in the Washington versus Barr case, which seeks to declare the federal law that criminalizes marijuana unconstitutional, have received impressive support in the form of several amicus briefs for cannabis industry organization research and current federal lawmakers. The, the case brought by former NFL player and current cannabis business owner Marvin Washington, along with other cannabis petitioners, is currently waiting for consideration at the U.S. Supreme Court. In a press release, Michael Hill, Hillard, lead pro bono counsel for the plaintiff, said, Criminalizing cannabis under the pretext that it has no medical utility and is too dangerous to be administered even under strict medical supervision is not just absurd. It's unconstitutionally irrational. The federal government owns at least two medical cannabis patents, distributes cannabis to patients around the country under the auspice of the FDA's Investigational New Drug Program has acquiesced to legalized programs in 38 U.S. states and territories and has approved at least one medical cannabis drug, Epidiolex, for distribution to children without a prescription. Yet the federal government maintains that cannabis is as dangerous as heroin, has no medical uses in the U.S., and is too dangerous to administer. Claims which do not square with reality and which place millions of Americans and billions in investment capital at risk. So, yeah, man, um, good on them for taking this lawsuit because it is hypocritical. You know, we, we've said this for a while in the cannabis industry that how is the federal government going to keep this thing illegal, not just illegal, but schedule one. But yet, on the other hand, or on the other side of the coin, have, have patents and allow companies to administer a drug or a synthetic type of drug or an isolated type of drug to children. So good on them for this lawsuit. Uh, I hope they win. I hope the Supreme Court just fucking throws it out and says, yeah, it's, it's a ridiculous thing. You have to take it off of the uh, Controlled Substance Act. Come on, guys. It's stupid. And that, brothers and sisters, is a report from the Cannabis Frontline. As always, there are links in the show notes so you can read the full articles. And yeah, let me know your opinion. Let me know what you think about these things. Okay, now let's move on to the interview that I promised you uh, with Canaqueen from Canaqueen Genetics. We talked about a lot of different things. We talked about, you know, the way that she winds up um, cracking or sprouting her seeds or germinating her seeds, I should say. And we also talked a bit about some of the seeds that she sent me, some of the seed packs that she sent me, what, 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 vari what varietals they were. And because she was so nice to send some seed packs, we're going to give away a couple of seed packs as well. So hang tight. I'm going to play a little bit of music and I'm going to put that on for you. Canna Queen from Canna Queen Genetics. She's uh, nice enough to take some time to come on the show, talk about a couple of different things she's got going on. Queen, buddy, how you doing today, man? Uh, it's been a long time. I know, Alex. I know I've been really busy here and there doing all kinds of stuff. So, um, how are you doing, Alex? Uh, you know, fuck, man. I'm living the dream. You know what? It's a little, uh, I don't know. You know, it's, uh, it's been hot and then it's been cold. But you know what? Well, I'm not going to talk about the weather. That's some bullshit stuff. What I want to talk about is um, last few, I don't know, days or maybe the probably the last week, you've been putting up videos of you making acrylic cups, which uh, turn out really cool. Um, good on you. Uh, yeah, I got a bunch of questions because I haven't seen the whole, a whole one all the way through. I've just seen clips because I just haven't had the time yet. But um, that machine you use... 
is where did you get that machine? What is it? Is does it just hold cups or what are you doing there? Okay, so there's a little kind of a backstory. So being in quarantine, like, you know, obviously I'm busy in the garden, but you know, we we just all like had to find we were grasping at straws how to just keep sane, you know what I mean? And so I'm just super creative and I was like everybody's doing the TikTok thing and I was hearing all these bad things like China owned it and was like stealing the videos and like all this stuff and so I I you know I I, I resisted as long as I could but then I jumped on the TikTok train and every stay at home mom and her sister's best friends best friends best friend was all doing epoxy tumblers and I was like whoa these are cool so I called it a tip TikTok wormhole and like you literally you just start watching one epoxy cup video and then you watch another one and another one and another one and before before you know it like you're three hours in and like you 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 you're a professional at doing this like you just it's just like so anyway i little by little started buying stuff little by little started buying you know the stuff that i i was seeing and there was a lot of hacks like you go to the dollar store so it, you know it's just something to keep me busy in the meantime um so yeah so this is the first cup i made and of course everything i do has to be cannabis related <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, so is that an is that an actual real leaf, or did you cut that out from yeah, somewhere? So, no, this is an actual cannabis leaf preserved by me. Uh, it's actually bred by me. This is the Wolf Unicorn F two Fino one. Actually, she's she's phenomenal. We'll talk about her in a minute. But so yeah, this leaf, I was like, yeah, I have to use this. So um, obviously, on the other side, I had to put that gas and mess logo and. There's like little cannabis leaf um, sparkles in it. So yeah, like I was like, I, I did, this is my first one and I was like, oh, that's it. The game is over. <laughs> hey, so you so should. I started making all. So you should make yeah. one of those for each one of your, your varietals and then that sell one, it as a okay, pack, so, like a pack of seeds and a cup. So that was the plan was like to do like a, like a, like a combo pack. So you buy a pack of seeds that comes with a matching stash draft for like an extra $15 or whatever. Yeah. So this is a chemtrail haze stash jar. It's a pint size. It's 16 ounces. Um, glitterati, you know, um, and this is an actual chemtrail haze. Leaf. So it's a strain specific stash jar with like, you know, the plastic lid it's, it's straight legit like they're really really super cool i can do every size and um yeah so i just started doing a bunch of stuff i have some wine tumblers that hey. i did with the hey is that leaves in them. is that jar glass the jar is glass yes oh, this is oh. uh, stainless these wine glasses are stainless huh wow that uh that came out yeah that came out really cool man good for you that's awesome but all right, let's. Uh, I want to talk. I want to talk a little bit about um, growing, though. Now that we've got the tumblers out of the way, and you'll probably, I'll probably order one or two. Um, <laughs> so, um, I want to know how. Okay, so I want to know how your garden, your breeding garden. It's different than my garden growing grass, growing weed to smoke. I mean, how how different is it? What are you what are you doing differently, especially let's say in flower, that most of us that most people don't do that aren't breeding. Let's what? just start with how I select seeds to germinate. I think that would just kind of be a better starting point. Okay. Um, yeah. When I germinate seeds, I you know I always breed with a purpose, breed with a goal. You know, so it's whatever. And like, it's weird how it comes to me. This is not how most other people, they plan it out to a T, but I literally go through my, my vault and whatever seeds that I already had in my mind that I was going to pop, I grab, but like, um, yeah, some will just speak to me. And so I grab, I put those in my pile with the ones I'm popping. And at the end of me selecting the seeds for, for the next round of, um, seedlings i'm at 70 to 100 seeds at a time 10 10 to 13 different strains just depending on what i'm pheno hunting or whatever but like that was the past because i was pheno hunting now i'm actually growing all of my own strains i have like 75 
but only 13 or like 17 are actually out. The rest I'm either crossing to other things or not releasing or, you know, I just made for fun or I made, you know, with somebody else or I'm playing with autos right now. So. Hey, but, so, uh, so when you germinate just real quick, how, how are you doing that? Are you, are you like a cup of water type of person or, you know, what, what are you straight into the soil? How are you doing that? Oh, this is what I suggest. Get all your stuff together. You want a pen, you want labels, you want cups, you want your tray, and you want your seeds. You want them all separated. You want to do them all one at a time. And when I germinate seeds, I take a cup, I mix the water first. So what I do is I just put, like, it, I have 3%, I think, hydrogen peroxide. I put about a tablespoon, or depending on how much water I use. But if I use, like, a half of a bottle of water uh, to pop 10 strains, you know, I would fill half a, bo a bottle of water because you don't need a lot of water. You would fill them up to probably about right here. Um, so, yeah, each cup is for each strain. You know, I mix the water, just the hydrogen peroxide and, and pure purified water or spring water. It could be any water. It could be rainwater. It could be just not well water probably or, like, you know, city water. But anyway, besides that, you fill every cup up and, you you know, you put your seeds in there. This is what I call the float tech. It's 100% germination rate every single time for me. I have, you know, almost a decade of experience, and I've tried every method you can think of. And this is hands off. Like, you don't want to touch your seeds. Like, there's a method where the bacteria in your mouth will break down the outer casing of the seed, and people put it in their mouth or, like, even in their belly button, like, and what? get that bacteria... I'm, I know it's gross. It's really gross, but that bacteria is, I guess, good for the germinating the seed. But belly button? Come on, people! People are just being weird now. Now they're just fucking seeing what you'll believe. Anyways, uh, but yeah, whatever. I don't know. Um, so how long are we leaving it in the water? Usually, in forty-eight hours, you have a hundred percent taps, and they will be floating on top of the water as long as you don't like. Do this to your tray or knock the cup over, they will float until you put them in dirt. The tap, the seed will float on top of the water and the tap will go into the water. So, but does it matter if it sinks though? It's, it's not, it's not going to mess up the seed. horrible if it sinks as long as you're going to get it in soil, you know, within the next within 24 hours. the next two days, okay. Yeah, okay. I wouldn't wait more than 24 hours if it sunk. Um... In that case, you just put it in the soil. Excuse me. So now, when you're ready to put them in the soil, are you just putting them in your regular soil mix? You you don't have like a a, a, a seedling mix? mix. I buffer it. Um, I just use like extra perlite, extra cocoa, and my seedling mix to the soil soil mix that I use now. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay. The so, soil, but I. So I buffer the seedling mix, and then, you know, I pop them up. I, I usually just take the pen that I write the label with, I turn it around, and I stick a hole. Like, it's good if you water the soil a little bit before you plant the seed because it's already moist when you put the seedling. You're not drowning it or pushing it further down into your cup. You want that taproot to have as long as a chance as it, ha as it can before it hits the bottom and starts going around. So does it matter how deep I put that seed? I mean, I don't want it too deep because then it's going to fight too hard to get through. As shallow as possible. So, like, within, like, a half an inch to an inch, I guess. Um, probably an inch. Like, I don't know, a finger. Like, right up here to my finger. I, that's my measurement. To your you know first knuckle? I mean? like, okay. I'm... No, hey, man, I, we don't need to get sciency. You know, that's cool. Or like thin, and it's usually probably about that deep. And then, you know, it'll drop down to right there. It's perfect. And okay. Like, you know, like a but I prefer to use square, uh, little, they're like little, I don't know what size they are. The little tiny square. The trays? Oh, it's so awful. If it, no, these are actual pots. They're like little plastic pots. They're like maybe four inch square. Huh. Um, oh my gosh. It's aesthetically pleasing. You have all these baby seedlings and like the cups aren't solo cups, like all jumbled together. You know what I mean? Like I said, they have a hundred, <laughs> right? So. Like they're all in rows, 
square. Like, there's not a space in what it is. Like, yeah. It's order, huh? Just, it's all just order. Right mm -hmm. on, right on. So let's get to that soil. Uh, what soil are you running? Like, brand new soil, what are you running? And then do you amend that new soil at all? Okay, so I was sponsored by Bio365, shout out. Uh, Bio, uh, Bio Tim, Sebastian, um, and, uh, Mark, they're all just amazing. They uh, sponsored me. I actually met Tim at the Emerald Cup at the booth, and um, it was like, it was an epic experience. But anyway, he, he was like, you like, the first thing he said to me was like, you like dirt? And I was like, uh, I love dirt. Like, what are you talking about? He was like, yeah, he's like, smoke some of this bud, you know? And so they handed me a pipe and it had uh, the Mac one in it grown by uh, Brennan. I think it was Brennan. By far the best Mac I'd ever smoked. I literally got so high. Like I was already high, but like it elevated me to like a whole another level. So anyway, he gave my friend a little bit. And on the way to the airport, we had rolled like eight joints and we had to write on them what they were so we could smoke them all before we left. And we were smoking this Mac one. And I'm going to tell you, we put this thing out. It was like a 20 minute ride, but there was, there was traffic, like you know, a lot of traffic going to LA. Wait, was it LA? No, it was San Francisco. Uh, so yeah, we, uh, we, we put this joint out like five times. In that 15 minute drive like we were, we were like we have to smoke it so good but like we couldn't even get through it we were just like yeah it was crazy but anyway so i was like yeah i need that dirt i want that dirt so they sponsored me with a pallet and it lasted me like about almost six months so after the six months i took my soil i was using beforehand which was the pro mix it's the vegetable potty mix but it's like organic and it feeds for nine months so it, it's a little sketch because it has those little fertilizer balls in it that yeah, remind yeah, me yeah. of. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Yep, yeah, it's all exactly. Organic, right? So I started re-amending the file 365 with the Pro Mix and phenomenal. Like, now I did it two times. I'm on the third round, and now I'm starting all over uh, with a different mix now. So... So is that all you amended that that three six five with? Is that is that Pro Mix? You just combine those two? Yeah, the Pro Mix, and then I I water with rainwater, and I water with um, recharge either once a week or once every two weeks. And that's it. Yeah, that recharge is really good, man. That stuff, um, <laughs> it's it's amazing results, man. My IPM is fierce, though. Like I have to tell you, like that's the two, sometimes three times a week. Like it's. It's it's the struggle is real with IPM, but I'm I'm finally catching my my niche with it. So, well, what's your regimen? What are you IPMing? Well, so for if anybody knows me and has followed me um, on Instagram or on any YouTube shows, they know I've battled. Uh, I call them super thrips, but I actually call them weed lice. Um, <laughs> but it was from the south like it was horrible it was so bad like every time i'd get like a handle on them because i was reusing the soil and i'm perpetual and there was no way i could restart what i had that I, there was just no way like i had to keep doing drenches and soaks and it was just it was hell like it was two years on and off of just straight hell so i am proud to say that i am weed lice free <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's a that's a T-shirt right there. You put that on a cup. Oh, I'm putting it on a cup. Ooh, dude, I'm gonna put it on rolling trays too. It's gonna go on. I'm we like there you this. go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, uh, man. Trays with the message. So. So now you sent me a little package a few well, probably about a month ago with different seeds, and um, we're gonna do a giveaway when this episode comes out for some of these seeds, but I want to talk about them. See if I can get a little uh, background on them. Just a couple of tips on what what, uh, what we can expect. Uh, now, the first one is a buttercream haze. Oh. Yep. So what what's the lineage with the buttercream haze? What are we looking at here? 
Um, the buttercream haze is layer cake by Swamp Boys, which is the wedding cake times GMO times TK scum. Ooh, nice. Um, I bred with that. I, I bred several things with that, and only a, a handful made it through. But the buttercream haze is only at an F1. But I'm gonna tell you what. There's so many different. It's like, it's like, it's like you grabbing a handful of Skittles, like. You can't you can't choose just one flavor. Like I do have a couple flavors. Like there's some I really don't like, but there's there's three that I I would eat out of the bag, right? So that's how I feel like with the phenos. I'm like, oh my gosh, like I can't choose. Like that's not fair. Like everybody should be able to be like, why well, I like these three. Well, I like these three. You know what I mean? Like there's a Eagle Gardens. I don't know if you guys follow Eagle, Eagle Gardens. In, yeah, uh, yeah, I follow Eagle Gardens. He grew. Uh, I think four, and he had three distinct, very distinct different phenos, but one was just like, I can't even explain it. It was like 12 inch long, like just donks. Like it was insane. He killed it, but he grew it for a few rounds. So he must've really liked it, which was really cool. So I sent him, I sent him some seeds to give away too. And I made this tray actually for him and, uh, let me see. I grew some, drew this drawing because when I was on Eagle show, I was, I, I will, I'll, I'll be talking about something and I'll be like, what was I saying? Like, I just forget, <laughs> like it's gone so fast. So I grew some, he's so talented. I was like, I have a brain fart, you know, like everything is in here, like Eagle with the joint and like his cat and stuff. And like, so I'm calling this the squirrel tray. It's for the, like the audience, it's like a rolling tray, but it's for the audience of, um, Eagle, uh, fucking talking and shit with Eagle. No, that came but, out. That came out real sweet. Cool man. I'm sure he's gonna appreciate that. Yeah, so I'm gonna make a few of these. I'm gonna make. I'm making this one right now. Yeah. So. Right on. Wow. Yeah, and uh, and F one F ones are fun, man. You get a lot of variation. You never know what you're gonna find, man. That's awesome. Hey, and by the way, I I like that little uh, wax stamp. That's a nice touch. That's pretty yeah. cool. My signature. Like it's like you're getting you're getting something from Canic Queen. Like you're getting a package that's sealed. It comes in a little clear glass bottle. Like if you open one, you can open one. It's a little clear glass jar with a cork top, you know. I even thought about starting to epoxy those. Like I'm going kinda nuts with it, but like why not get the personalized, like little tiny mini stash yep, jar for your seeds? Like, oh yeah. yeah. You might have to cut that out because I don't want anybody to steal that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, okay, so now the next one, uh, the other one I want to talk about is the Lemon Delight. The Lemon Delight is also, it's from the same lineage from Swamp Boys. It was the Lemon Trees times the GMO times TK Skunk. And that one is the one that I have absolutely fallen in love with a lot of other people have it's been growing it's been growing in south africa it's been growing it's being grown in scotland right now um canada like it she likes the other countries she really expresses like these really dark merlots and like uh she's so what's what's that flowering time on her oh well, uh, that's kind of indiscretion right now. I mean, we had it tested. Actually, ran with the Operation Grow Show. Um, I, that's the strain. They didn't. Even, it was a mystery strain. They didn't know the strain until they were about four or five weeks in, and uh, they were growing the Lemon Delight F2s. And I mean, they just did phenomenal, and everybody loved them. So I ran with them. You know, I did an open pollination with the Queen White Haze, and now I have. I have uh, the Lemon Delight Trail Mix. It's like four different fema- phenos that will be going out in five packs here soon. So that's something that. So yeah, what? What were the? On. Do you know what the different flowering times they were getting? Yeah. So uh, it's anywhere from ten to the, one of the growers ran one eighteen weeks. Wow, eighteen weeks. But Holy cow. let me tell you, it was an amazing stress and he pushed it i actually got the test to like to, to try some but let me tell you that entire plant looked brown only because it was entirely amber the entire plant was so wow. amber that like, brown and crusty and dead and like it was i got to smoke it i got to 
touch it, see it, you know, I, I got to taste it in rosin and it was just blow your, like you hit that stuff and you know, fuck your day up. Like your whole day is fucked. <laughs> wow. Right on, um, man. But 18 weeks, it, you know, I'm glad he did run it 18 weeks so I could see if it, you know, could stand the, withstand the test of time and not hurt yeah, my out or turn I don't know if I'm that patient, man. 18 weeks. Like, in my mind, I'd already be smoking it. <laughs> this is my friend, uh, he's a medicated Mexican. He makes honeys and gummies, and he just, oh, yeah, he makes that good, good stuff. Yeah, right on. Um, all right, now the next one that I want to talk about is the Queen White Haze. The Queen White Haze. Uh, what's the lineage on the Queen White Haze? I know you've been working that line for a while because these are F4s. Yeah, actually, I'm on my fifth year working this strain, actually about to back, back cross the F5. And, uh, I mean, actually, yeah, so I'm about to back cross it and lock it in, hopefully it, uh, one more generation and see what happens. Uh, if not, I'm good where she's at right now. I'm really, really just in love with her. Everything I cross her to... In male form, she dominated like no other. So I had to really work around that for a while and try to find what. I did a lot of pheno hunting. I, I popped probably about 80 different, maybe 100 different other people's strains. And I crossed her to a lot of stuff. So <clears throat> some made it, some didn't. A lot favor Queen White Haze just all the way. It's an OG Haze. It's got this structure of the OG, but it still has that, that musky, hazy, you know, that, that high too, that light, you know, you could conquer your day type of high. Okay. But very medicinal. So. so also what kind of, uh, what kind of flowering time does that one going to have? She's a nine to, she's an eight to 10 week strain, mostly between eight and nine weeks. She's a pretty short flower. Actually crossed her to an auto, and um, usually in the F1 generation of an auto, you won't see a lot of uh, fast flower, or you'll see a lot of fast flowering autos in that first generation, but not autos. And I found probably about 33% out of 100 seeds. So um, it was kind of cool because she's such a fast flowering plant, kind of short in the process, not short in the process, my uh, Morning Star Seed Company and I are collabing on that strain, making Auto Purple Micro Queen, and it will be the Queen White Haze and the uh, Auto Purple Micro Dot. He is working on the F2s right now, so we're collabing. So you are making an auto. So you are making an auto of the Queen White Haze. Mm -hmm. Wow, that uh, well, that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun to grow, man. And, yeah, uh, I'm excited. You know, it's it's a process. Oh yeah, I'm for sure. For sure. Right so, are you learning how to do autos also? Other than doing one project at a time, which I was doing ten to twelve projects at a time, but now you know, other than doing one project at a time, I'm not I'm not really focusing on breeding. I'm focusing on growing out my gear. Um, I have a lot of stuff in testing with my guardsmen, and. Um, we have a lot of cool stuff coming up, so I'm just trying to catch my footing again, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. Um, hey, and real quick, as always, I want to tell you how much I really enjoy your logo. You probably have, in my opinion, one of the best logos out there. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah. My logo artist, just shout him out, Medicaid Gaming 215, It's, uh, uh, DJ it's a pretty kick-ass you know logo, I man. Visionary. He's done all like my my friend passed away last November. He hand drew this picture. Let me see if I get I got it. Yeah, so he hand drew that picture of my friend Miss Lady Luck. Um, but all my all my logos he did. He, he's just hey and the lucky unicorn. So yeah, I'm excited about you know everything. Just a little turner. What do you got coming up? I know you're working on a bunch of videos. So then I'm trying to get some viewership over from my Instagram um, to my YouTube. So I've been doing just like Tumblr, Tumblr's live, just going live, just uh, 
answering questions, like whatever. I just, I've been trying to get some viewership over there. And so I can start doing tutorials with my friend Alex. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to start doing like actual tutorials. So I'll be able to bring the pool into the studio here and show you uh, how I do a thin or a top or plant a seed or mix my IPMs or, you know, whatever the case may be. So um, yeah. I'm really excited about it. I have to have a lot more people to, you know, make it worth doing for, you know? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of really great education you're going to get up over there. Because like you said, we're going to find out not the best yeah, way to do live breeding. Like, it, yes, this is stuff like you want to see, like, but you, you feel like maybe like you can't ask the question or you, you, I don't know, whatever the case may be. But like, that's what I want to show, you know? Yeah, well, you know, I'm. I'm hoping we'll we're gonna, we're gonna make some videos about just the basic things about how can a queen gets it done, and yeah. um, you know, yeah, figure find out how everyone gets it done because there's no one best way. There's just uh, no. there's just a lot of different and that's ways. What I'm Mine will be the most minimalist. I guess I was trying to explain that when I'm breeding or pheno hunting, I top, I train, I stress. But I don't like pump them full of synthetics. Like I'm completely 100% organic. Everything that I give them is, you know, from nature. That's what nature would give them. This is them in their natural state of beauty, you know, and terp products. Like, yes, I do have a very good light, um, but it doesn't, you know, it, it's a comp, it's a complement of everything, your environment, your soil, your lighting, your genetics, everything just, it has to be, it's, it's a cycle, but, you know, you can get it. You can work it out. We can help you. Hey, and since you mentioned it, I want to ask you a question about lighting. What kind of lights are you running indoors? Okay, so I have a Meow Mix. Um, it's a Quantum Board. It's a 660, 3500K. Um, I think it has, like, 300. It's, like, the Quantum Board. It's a... Samsung quantum boards with the two meanwhile drivers. I'm not like a tech expert, but I did a lot of research and my, you know, I have a lot of friends. They helped me, you know, pick, pick the light that was best for the area that I had. And I saved up the money and yeah, I, it, it's the quality light. Like <clears throat> I did something stupid and, and fucked up the, the dimmer driver or whatever. So, um, but it was a, it was, you know, the only thing I had to fix it was because, me. <laughs> oh, I've done that. I've put uh, the wrong lights on dimmer switches before that weren't supposed to. I don't know if that's what happened to you, but I remember fucking up a couple, like when LED first came out. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to dim it down. It's like, no, that's not made for that. But um, This sounds so, so bad, but I'm going to out myself, dude. Like, I paid, you know, a good penny, like close to $1,000 for that light. But, like, I had this timer, and it was the only one that I could count on. It was the only one that I could trust, like, it only had two holes. Like it didn't have a hole for the prong, and I, you know, oh, I took the prong off of the oh, cord. And, yeah. And we had like a lightning storm in it. My oh, shit. my light was like dimming, brightening, dimming, brightening, oh, dimming, wow. brightening. Like, yeah, I had the YouTube. I had uh, my friend called Meanwell for me. Like it was crazy, but we just, you know, yeah. Hey, anyway, what we did was not. Hey, so when you started growing, were you using HPS lights? My first, my first actual setup that I paid for lighting was like a Raptor, like 1000 watt HPS, like, yeah, dude, like, yeah. So HPS was where it was at in like 2000 and I think it was like 15 or whatever. But. Hey, do, so, but do you notice any kind of different terpene production from HPS to LED? There's so much of a difference. I mean... I love mixing them if I can. I like getting like a 600 watt HPS and like put it in the middle and like have the LED boards around the outside of it just to have that spectrum because yeah. it, it just heats them up. It like it just gives them like this this girth, you know. Like the LEDs make them dense as hell like, and frosty, but like it's missing that like red spec. Like I don't know. Like I can't really explain it, but yeah, I definitely it's... get giants when I mix the spectrum for sure. Yeah, it, it, it's a trip how you notice the difference between if you just run one type, or let's just say LED, 
because I know a lot of people, because out here in California, um, they're trying to, well, they're making all indoor cultivators switch from HPS to LED. Doesn't matter what it is, but you're running the LED. Heat, that, the heat output that it puts oh, yeah. on. The, just, the heat and the power, I, I get it. Um, but I don't think what the people who are <laughs> regulating it understand is that it, it brings out different characteristics. You know, um, yeah, I don't know. I just wanted to get your thoughts on just the differences because, yeah, there, there are the differences, man. You got to you got to at least notice them and acknowledge it, you know? Yeah, there are. So thanks a lot for being on the show, okay. Queen. And uh, we're going to see you real soon. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for having me. Have yep. a great day. Thank you. Well, there you go, everyone. Once again, that was Canna Queen from Canna Queen Genetics, and I want to thank her for taking the time to come on the show. I love hanging out with her. She's so much fun. She's such a great friend. And you know what? She's going to have her own show real soon coming up. Um, I believe it's going to be a YouTube show, and you're going to see me on there quite a bit. So keep an eye out for that. And here in the next few days, we are going to do a giveaway for a couple of her seed packs that she sent out. So keep an eye out for that, too. That's going to be really, that's going to be really fun. Well, brothers and sisters, check it out. That's all I have to share with you today. That's a show. That's it. Now, don't forget, if you are a cannabis company, the most inexpensive and best way to keep in contact with your fans, to keep in contact with the general public about what you've got coming up, what services you've got coming up, what new products you've got coming out. The most inexpensive way is to advertise on the In My Grow show. So send us an email. That is inmygrow at gmail.com, and we can absolutely find the best way for you to do that. Now, I want to thank everyone who has been subscribing to the podcast, who's been subscribing to the YouTube channel. Thank you very much. That really does help the show out. And if you haven't yet, why don't you go ahead and leave a rating and a review wherever you listen to podcasts, um, and then go over to inmygrow.com, subscribe to the website, and while you're there, take a look around the website. I've got a, There's a lot of different cannabis information up there. You know, there's a section where it's called The Doctor's. And that just has a list of all the conversations that I've had with different doctors about different ways that cannabis can help different disease symptoms or different diseases. So check it out. Take some time. Look around, man. It's, it, it's, let me know what you think. And don't forget to go over to YouTube when you have the time. That's youtube.com slash in my grow show. And you can see the video version of this episode. And if you want to help the show financially, you can go to inmygrow.com, Click on support the show tab. And you can buy a t-shirt, got some new t-shirts up there. So check them out or check it out. I think I got more than one. Got to double check. Well, mis amigos, mi gente, my friends, my people, that's all I have to share with you today. You know, I love you all very much. And remember to always, please, to grow, learn, and teach. Teach.